Problem three. This graph shows a heating curve produced by gradually heating one mole of a pure substance with a source of constant energy and periodically measuring its temperature. A, what is the boiling point? B, what is the melting point? C, does this substance have a greater heat of fusion or heat of vaporization? How can you tell? For how many minutes is any of the substance in liquid form? E, for how many minutes is any of the substance in solid form? And F, which will have a greater specific heat, the solid form of this substance or the liquid form, and how can you tell? Part A asks us, what is the boiling point? The boiling point of the substance is at 80 degrees Celsius, because at that temperature, the heating curve plateaus, meaning the substance is going through a physical state change. Also, it is the second plateau, meaning that the substance is either boiling or condensing. So keep in mind, this line is solid, liquid, gas. And so the line between the flat line between liquid and gas is the boiling point. Part B, what is the melting point? The melting point of the substance is 20 degrees Celsius because at that temperature, the heating curve first plateaus, meaning that the substance is going through a physical state change. Since it's the first plateau, the substance is either melting or freezing. So remember, below this is solid, liquid, gas. So what happens between a solid and a liquid? If we're adding heat, it's melting, right? So the melting point is at 20 degrees Celsius. C, does the substance have a greater heat of fusion or heat of vaporization, and how can you tell? So this plateau at the boiling point is where we would look to understand heat of vaporization. So, and this plateau here, where melting or freezing occurs, is where we would look to interpret heat of fusion. So the substance has a greater heat of vaporization because the horizontal portion of the graph corresponding to the boiling of the substance is greater in length than the horizontal portion of the graph corresponding to the melting of the substance. Now remember that the horizontal portion just means an increased amount of time or heat added for a longer period of time. Since the flow of heat into the substance is constant, then it takes more time to vaporize than to melt. That it takes more time to vaporize than to melt means it takes more energy. Part D. For how many minutes is any of the substance in liquid form? So we know that we have liquid here, right? So we could say from minute three to minute nine, so six minutes, but we would be wrong. So from part of the substance is in liquid form from the minute it starts to melt and that happens at one minute until it has all boiled, which occurs at 12 minutes. So from minute one to minute 12, some form of the substance is in liquid form. So that's a total of 11 minutes, 11 minutes. E, for how many minutes is any of the substance in solid form? So we'll do the same thing. We know that we have solid substance here, beginning at time zero for the first minute. But we continue to have solid until it has completely melted. And that's up to minute three. So from time zero up to minute three, or a total of three minutes, some amount of the substance is in solid form. Which will have a greater specific heat, the solid form of this substance or the liquid form? So here's the solid form, and here's the liquid form. 
The liquid form of the substance has a greater specific heat. You can tell this on the liquid portion of the graph by seeing that the slope of the liquid form is less steep than the solid portion. This means that it takes more heat energy to increase the temperature of the liquid than the solid, so the specific heat of the liquid is higher.